Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the pen ridden quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. I've been spending a lot of time on the valve gear, making many iterations to parts, watching the various parts move trying to get a nice operation and then contain it all within the frames. Making a new much larger expansion link where the slot extends well past the holes for the eccentric straps. Here's the new one on the left with the original on the right. To get full valve treble the die block needed to do a lot of sliding when the expansion link was at maximum angularity. The boss still needs to be made and brazed in. The latest expansion link, incorporating my latest thinking, this time with curved slot, using my step-by-step -step manual CNC method, with 10 thou steps on the x-axis. There's a 27 thou rise at each end. In order to progress the valve gear, I needed to know how much headroom space we had before hitting the boiler barrel. Making a start on the rear boiler support stretcher. The boiler will have a two and a half inch diameter barrel. I've had it in stock for a long time. Producing the boiler barrel radius by taking facing cuts rather than boring cuts. This is from a piece of five mil brass strip. Chamfering the edges with the fly cutter. Jumping out of sequence a bit, but here's the stretcher in position. The upper piece is bolted onto the lower 3 8 square brass member with invisible M3 cap screws. The piece of wire which is also resting in the smoke box enables me to see that the valve gear won't touch the boiler. The pivot point for the new expansion link is on the center line of the slot and no longer the center line of the eccentric strap holes. In this picture I am widening the side plates so that I can use countersunk screws. I soft soldered the original plates onto the larger blanks and drilled through for the hole positioning. The first side has been done. To the left you can see a simple suspension arm holding up the extension rod and a much larger lifting arm on the right with a now redundant hole in the frames. There's some trial notches and extra holes so that I can test the operation. The longer lifting arm is so that I can raise the link much higher keeping it within the frames at all times. With the old setup, the link was nearly at rail height in the lowered position. Using my old apprentice-made scribing block or surface gauge, with a scriber to make sure I'm getting enough free vertical movement of the link in the up and down position. You can see the all brass rear stretcher assembly attached to the frames. Making a fork end for the extension rod. I've become adept at making these using the 45 thou slitting saw to cut all the slots. I took a bit of care to get the slots in the correct position. Braze in position on the extension rod. Here are the pieces to make a new suspension arm to hold up the extension rod. They will be brazed together. The boss is drilled 1 8 to pivot on the shaft. Arm in position. It has a low pivot point so that it doesn't lift up the extension rod too much as it rocks. I mocked up a reversing lever to fix the reversing arm in position. It needs about half inch of full travel. I've been working on new, more cosmetically appealing extension rods, two this time for both cylinders. Using the original, I measured with drill shanks how far away from the square cutout the axle was. On a blank of 1.6mm steel sheet, I marked out the new shape using paint cans for the large radii, maintaining a quarter inch depth all around. Careful hacksawing and filing and polishing made for pleasurable bench work. You can see how much modified the original piece is, with pieces brazed on and old holes plugged. It has served its purpose well. Looking at the date stamps on these pictures, these new pieces took me seven days to make. I think all these pieces between the frames will be painted red eventually.
Thanks for watching.